I was surprised by the result and that more people than I thought had seen through the project fear. And I was concerned that the EU was becoming uh, corrupt and undemocratic, but it seemed more people than I thought agreed with me, 17.4 million people in fact. So it was a surprise, uh, but it was a good one. Well, I think I'm quite an interesting case in that I come from a Europhile background. So I started out as the EU's biggest fan. I got a scholarship to study in Europe with the, an Erasmus scholarship. And I remember when I applied for it, I described myself as an eager European. And I really was. I really believed in the free movement of people as a kind of utopian vision. And I believed that the UK could only benefit from more integration with Europe. But since then, I've realised that it's not the utopian vision that I thought it was. And although lots of people that I know, people I went to university with, people that are now working in the liberal elite sort of media, my family, they still have a strong sort of Europhile background. I've completely changed my views just based on knowing how the EU works and seeing it, the corruption and just the unaccountability. It just seems unfair to me that everyday people don't know who their unelected representatives are. So the idea of the EU and the utopian vision, I still strongly believe that, but I don't think it's possible in practice practice and I think it's becoming you know more of a nightmare and it's corrupt and it's not good for the UK so I can see in theory and I still believe in the theory and I love the idea of it and I am a Europhile at heart I always was but the practice is that it's harming people and it's steering the UK in in a really frightening totalitarian direction of unaccountability two words uh, proud and relieved proud that ordinary people were able to get their voices heard and they stood up for the UK and for sovereignty, accountability and democracy. And even though there were so many attacks upon them and upon democracy, people stood firm in, in a very British way. They saw through the liberal elite's moral bankruptcy and they stood firm on what they believed. And um, I'm delighted that, that that has happened. And also relieved because the alternative, which is globalism, it could have been absolutely terrible for the UK. So I'm really pleased that that has been thwarted in the best possible way at the ballot box, which for me is just shows how important that democracy is and we must defend it at all costs. Uh, that's a really worrying um, idea and you know being for my family are Scottish uh, my ancestors are Scottish so it's a very personal and emotional idea for me the thought of the UK splitting up and I know Nicola Sturgeon announced yesterday that she would be seeking another referendum but I think she's just using it as a political bargaining tool I don't think she could ever seriously want to do that I can't see why anyone in Scotland would want to shackle themselves to the dying EU that is on its knees, you know, it's corrupt and it's unaccountable and democratic, all those negative things. And the UK has such a strong history. I think Scotland would be cutting off its nose to spite its face, you know, definitely. And I don't think Scottish people would vote for that. If they did, it would be a terrible decision. Um, so I hope that, the, that Scotland and Nicola Sturgeon are just using that as, as a political game, which is unfortunate, but I can see why they're doing it, but I hope it won't come to fruition.